Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 12 of my Giant Hulkbuster build. Before we get on with that, I need to give a shout out to Class 7THA of Cheslin Hay School in Walsall in the West Midlands. And that shout out was requested by Tim Harris through my Patreon campaign. Hi Tim, hope you're doing well. So let's just recap on the build. In previous episodes, I built a plywood frame which I can climb into, unlock all the joints and then walk around in. I've also built some cardboard mock-up panels that you can see the remaining ones just behind me and those are going to eventually be replaced with the final shells for the suit. I've already built some of the arm frames and the mechanics. In a couple of episodes ago I produced the opening arm pod devices where weapons and things are going to be stored which I need to come back to build and I've also got motors that operate the hands. Last time I sorted out the elbow joint which is driven by a pulley with nylon printer filament as a drive belt. And today, hopefully, we're going to come along and build some more frame for the upper arm and look at where the shoulder bell is going to be mounted. So the eventual aim is that the arms from the elbow down, and including the weapon pods and the hands and all of those motor functions, are going to be driven remotely electronically. So I've got these joysticks, which are normal old gaming joysticks, and those are going to be fitted into the upper arm, which is as far as my real arm reaches. Um, now the actual shoulder joint is quite a bit further out than my real joint. So that means that um, when the arms are down, basically I can reach further down the arm. And when I put my arm right out, I can't reach so far. So a couple of people have suggested that I put this joystick on a slider, which slides up and down, which I'm probably going to do. So thanks for those suggestions. I think I'm going to use desk sliders for those, or at least drawer sliders from kitchens. Some of them are really heavy and have ball bearings in them, and some of them just have little wheels and they're quite thin and lightweight, which are the ones I think I'm going to use. But I need to go to a DIY store and investigate that before I fit the joysticks in here. And what I'll also need is a kind of cuff thing that's padded that I can slot my wrist into, so that when I'm moving the arm around, I'm not putting all of the load on this joystick. So I've got a bit more work to do there. But today we're going to attempt to build the bicep frame, as I mentioned. So these pistons here are fake, of course. This one is covering a piece of wood. And the ones here are covering some colourful bungee cord, which is suspending the arm, so that we don't put so much pressure on the pivot point of the motor. So we're going to have to replace these bungees with some thicker ones, or double them up as the weight increases on the arm. Um, and also, this thing is restricting the uh, bungee from retracting at the moment until this hook has gone. So there's a few adjustments to make. But essentially what we need to do is make a bicep that covers this. So we need a cover that covers the ends of these so they look like hydraulic pistons going into the underneath of the arm from the inside. And I need to build the frame that holds that. I've got a place here which was to mount the shoulder bell but I need to add a stick and then add the frame for the shoulder bell. And then all the panels are going to be built in the same way which is the same way that I did the opening weapons pod in the arms, which is made of foam PVC backed with plastazote foam and 3D printed details stuck on. So we can form that quite well with heat so we can get some curved contours and some other bits and pieces. So there are a few 3D parts this week. I've designed all these in Autotest 123D design as usual. Um, the other parts I'm not going to show you because they're literally flat bits of plastic with holes in which are going to make some brackets for mounting this. Um, what I've got here is both sides of the bicep. So these effectively are two brackets which take some strips of aluminium that come off brackets at the bottom of the elbow and they reach all the way up to the bicep which are basically going to look like a kind of vented structure on each bicep. The actual vents are going to be made out of sheet material, they're going to be made out of foam PVC board painted up in probably gold for this part and these 3D printed brackets are going to hold them so that's the left and the right. Um, so basically a bracket that has a big ear piece on that sticks onto the stick with screws and a piece which is effectively a placeholder to align the vents on the other side. So let's get those printed on my Lulzbot Taz and hopefully when I put them together things will become clearer.
So here are my 3D printed parts, which have come out okay. So I've got these parts which are going to make up vents as I explained, and they go in this orientation. So this piece goes on the other end. And in between them I've got these slightly curved things made of foam PVC, uh, which will align onto there and be tied up at the other end. And then along with the other brackets and some strips of aluminium, I'll be assembling the whole thing so that these float right in front of where the pistons are. So I need to spray these up with some paint and I've also got the foam backing which I'll be sticking onto all of the foam PVC pieces to give it a bit of extra thickness and some definition. These are going to get sprayed gold. So let me get those painted up and get the whole thing stuck together. So I've made a pair of these, so we can see one side has the side on and the others don't. There's probably going to be some more detail in all these made of 3D printed parts. But essentially this goes around here to uh, make a feature to cover these pistons on the front of the bicep. So putting these pieces in place really helps me get the extremes of the pieces. So having this here helps me size the shoulder bell and work out how far in or out the chest needs to be. So I've got some brackets that I also made in that video. So I've got this one, which attaches to this piece of wood, and that's got a nice piece of aluminium on which can hold this thing in place so it floats there. There's also another one which goes onto the bracket where the elbow pivot is, and these have already got the holes made in them to line up. So those two pieces meet in a triangle to mount on that vent shape. So there's also going to be another piece. So if you can imagine this being the front of the bicep, there'll also be a panel behind here so that we actually have a front. And you can't see my arm inside and obviously more detail on the side, but lots of it's going to made, be made high detail. So lots of panels like this with lots of detail on them to cover the whole thing. And I still obviously have to make the other panels for the rest of the forearm and things once I've put the weapon pods in. So I also managed to get hold of some drawer sliders from Kitchen Drawers. They're just these things um, which have a basically a wheel and a wheel. So these are going to be the things that hold the sliding joysticks and uh, wrist cuffs for holding my arms in. So I've, these ones will screw onto the existing piece of wood that's the main stick for the arm on one side. Facing them I've mounted these ones on a piece of wood with a little bracket on one end which is 3D printed and the other end screws onto the existing screws for the motor mount which goes straight through that plate and out the other side. So that'll make my pair of sliders, so I just need to build a platform on there which I can mount the joystick and a thing to hold my wrist. So I think it's going to be like that and I hold onto the joystick to hold my wrist in but when I push around sideways it's actually the cuff that's taking the load of moving the arm. So I've got one of these bicep pieces placed on here so it floats quite nicely to cover those pistons there and so the arm can still move around as much as it needs to. This is only fixed on with one screw where the triangle of aluminium meets so I can still um, adjust this before I finally screw it in place. So um, it's a bit wobbly at the moment but there will be some more of the frame getting built but as I said I'm just sort of placing these parts so that I can size the other parts. I've also screwed in my desk drawer sliders which you can't quite see. I still need to make the platform for that which I'll be doing next time when I fit the joysticks. So let's have a look at this shoulder bell. So here are some more rather unexciting looking bracket parts. Um, I wanted to just make a point of showing you these because even though they're not very interesting to look at and probably looking at them 3D printing isn't very interesting either, they do actually need to be designed, made and um, printed and put together so um, a lot of this video I appreciate isn't particularly exciting making these sort of blocks and things and screwing things together but obviously the parts have to get made they consume my time and I make these videos as I go each week so obviously I actually have to spend the time making them and that's why the content is the way it is in this video so these are basically um, two brackets this is for left and right shoulder bells 
So I've got the long brackets on the right um, fit onto the existing mounting holes I left on the um, universal shoulder joint. And the ones on the left um, will be turned around perpendicular to those and basically there's a piece of wood which screws between them and then it fits onto the parts on the left. So these parts um, that are curved are there so that I can adjust the angle of a right angle piece of wood which will make up the rest of the sort of frame that holds the shoulder bells when I get around to building them. And the reason that curve is there and the hole in the centre of that curve is so that we can make that piece of wood adjustable and I don't know where it needs to be at the moment so I'll be printing these near to solid and then making an additional hole in the future to set that piece of right angle wood at a specific angle. So let's get those printed out and I can show you what I mean in real life. So here are those very unexciting parts. I didn't bother uh, filming the 3D printing because it's probably not that interesting to see. But basically we've got a piece like this and we've got a stick that fits in there and we've got a screw there so that the piece can be screwed on. They're also going to be glued on with Gorilla Glue. And these two holes mean that the part can mount onto the existing universal joint of the shoulder and be bolted on and be removed for transport and so on. Once that piece is fitted on there, we've got another piece which goes at the end. If I pick the right one, no, I was right the first time, which is also glued and screwed onto the end. And that allows um, a, another piece to be mounted at an arbitrary angle. And I don't know what that angle is yet, but it can mount in one centre point. And I can cut another hole to vary its position, um, which basically um, denotes the angle of the shoulder bell. So let's put that together and I'll show you that on the suit. Hello, I'm standing on a precarious arrangement of items at the moment, so I can show you this piece properly. I've got the other one here. Uh, which I made and I've put the pieces together now. So that's actually for the other side But what we've got here is one of the pieces installed so you can see it just here So that's bolted onto the um, existing piece that I made with two bolts So it can be removed and the shoulder bell is going to be attached to this stick so that can be totally removed And at the back we've got our one hole and our sort of fan shape So the angle of that shoulder bell can be varied and fixed in position depending on what sort of slant I want so I'm kind of thinking ahead to building the rest of the frame. I'm not sure how exactly the shoulder bell is going to look, but I'm leaving it to be as extensible as possible so I can change that around in the future. So what we've now got is um, the shoulder bell arrangement so that it can lean backwards and forwards with the arm and it can lean in and out with the arm. But when the arm rotates, uh, the shoulder bell does not. So basically your, the arm will rotate underneath the shoulder bell, but the shoulder bell will follow in the other directions. So sorry the parts in this video weren't very exciting. As I mentioned earlier, they need to be made and I need to consume time designing and making them and printing them and putting them together. So I thought I might as well show you all of the detail. Hopefully next time we can put the shoulder bells together or at least flesh out the frames and some of the panels. And I'm also hoping I can get my joysticks installed on the sliders, even if it is just um, to grip my arm and they don't actually control the electronics. And then I can actually get into the suit and walk around and see what it's like. A few comments on previous videos have asked me what the weight of the suit is like. Um, I've just picked up the torso and it's actually not too bad. It's definitely heavier than um, a lot of other costumes, of course, but it's going to be um, quite bearable to spend some time in. Obviously, I've tried to use materials and make them as light as possible and use sparse infill densities on 3D prints where I can so they're not solid plastic. So don't forget to check out my channel for my other videos. Don't forget last Friday's video to see me dressed as Iron Man walking around the Brighton Mini Maker Fair in the UK. Obviously there's more on my giant Hulkbuster suit, including the initial frame testing. And also don't forget to check out my 3D printed Alien Xenomorph scrap metal inspired 3D printed suits.